Welcome back to the Architect Fitness video series on nutrition. My name is Tony. In the first video of this series, we talked about flexible dieting. Years and years of science have shown us that total calories and the macronutrients that make up those calories are the biggest and most important factor in changing your body composition. Flexible dieting states that it doesn't matter where those calories and macros come from as long as you are hitting your target numbers. The example we used from the first video was it wouldn't matter if you got 27 grams of carbs from a banana or 27 grams of carbs from a serving of Sour Patch Kids, your body would treat those carbohydrates basically the same. So what that means is you have to track your food in order to hit your daily calories and macronutrients. And that's where a fitness app like MyFitnessPal comes into play. Now we can track our food right on our smartphone with a number of different apps, but we recommend MyFitnessPal because it's one of the most popular and easiest to use apps out there. It's also free. So in this video, we're gonna teach you how to use MyFitnessPal, set up your account, track your food, and how to hit your macros. Before we get into that, you might be thinking that tracking your macros and using a food tracker like MyFitnessPal is a big waste of time and kind of a pain in the butt. Let's consider the alternative. All other diets that exclude certain types of foods or food groups are basically just a roundabout way to forcing you into a calorie deficit. So why not be in a calorie deficit while still eating foods that you enjoy eating? The only way to do that is by keeping a food journal and hitting a specific amount of calories and macros. The average person looks at their smartphone over 80 times a day. And once you get into the swing of tracking your food in a food journal like MyFitnessPal, it becomes very easy. And hopefully this video is going to show you how to make it even easier. So we're going to cover the basics of how to track your food, and we'll get into some more advanced things in later videos. But if you guys have any questions, let me know, and I hope this helps. First, you want to go to your app store and search for and download MyFitnessPal. Once that's done, you will need to create an account. When you are setting up your account, MyFitnessPal will ask you about your personal information, goals, body weight, and etc. You can skip all that if you want, because it's not necessary at this time to use the app. We're going to use our fictional character from the first video, Jenny Slimfest. After your account is created, the first thing you want to do is set up your target macros and calories based on the information we provided to you. If you're not a member of our gym, we would recommend getting a nutrition coach to calculate your macros for you. We do not recommend using MyFitnessPal's recommendations for calories and macros. We strictly use the app to track our food and our body weight. That's it. First, we need to set our calories. Click on the four horizontal bars in the top left. And if you're using an iPhone or a different phone from my Google Pixel, your MyFitnessPal app might look slightly different. Those four bars bring up this menu, and we're gonna select Goals. The first thing we need to do is set our calories and macros. So under Nutrition Goals, click the top option, Calorie, Carb, Protein, and Fat Goals. First, we're going to set our calories. Jenny SlimFast is supposed to be eating 1,687 calories a day. So, we're going to change that. Next, we're going to set our specific macros. MyFitnessPal has both a free and paid version of the app. In the free version, you cannot set your target macros to specific grams. Instead, MyFitnessPal makes you choose what percentage of your calories are to come from each macronutrient. And this is done in 5% increments. For example, right now MyFitnessPal is saying, 50% of Jenny Slim Fast's calories are coming from carbohydrates, 20% of her calories are coming from protein, and 30% of her calories are coming from fats. Using our example from the first video, she was supposed to have 30% of her calories from protein, 42% of her calories from carbs, and 28% of her calories from fat. But my fitness pal only lets me adjust my macros in 5% increments. So we're gonna have to get this as close as possible. Now, she wants a total of 178 grams of carbohydrates. So if I go to 45%, that puts it at 190, and if I go 40%, that puts it at 169. So I'm gonna choose 169 or the 40% because that's a little bit more accurate. 
Next, let's look at protein. 30% of Jenny SlimFast's calories are supposed to come from protein, so that's no problem. We can set that exactly how we want it, about 127 grams of protein, which is 30% of our total calories for the day. That leaves us with fat, and Jenny SlimFast is supposed to have 28% of her daily calories come from fat, so we're going to select 30% of her calories to come from fat, and that's going to get us close enough. Click the check mark in the top right to save those changes. Now that our target macros are set, we can begin tracking our food. I'm going to go back to the main menu, and the very bottom, I'm going to select Diary. And this brings me to my food diary for the day. There are three basic ways to track a food. You can search for it in My Fitness Pal's database, you can use a barcode on a food product to scan the food, or you can create a new food. First, let's learn how to search. Once you're in your diary, under any of the meal times, click Add Food. We'll start with breakfast. Type your food into the search bar and hit the search button. A list of foods will pop up. My Fitness Pal's database is user generated. That means people like you and me add foods to the database. If you see a green check mark next to a food, that means the information is verified by My Fitness Pal to be accurate. You don't have to choose foods that are verified, but if you select a non verified food, take a look at the information to make sure it looks correct. I'm going to do a search for a green apple. And here you can see a green apple is verified by My Fitness Pal to be accurate. Click on the item and you can make changes to the serving size. If you're satisfied with what you have, click the check mark in the top right. Next, let's talk about how to scan a food. Click Add Food, but this time, instead of using the search bar, click the barcode icon on the right. This will allow you to scan a food. Once again, you can change the serving size as needed, and then add the food to your diary. Lastly, we can create our own food in MyFitnessPal if what we are looking for is not in the database. Once again, click Add Food. In the top right corner, you will see a plus sign. Click that and select Create a Food. From here, you will fill in the information about the food, including the name, brand, serving sizes, calories, macros, and vitamins. I highly recommend being as thorough as possible when using this feature. The last tracking feature we're going to cover today is going to be copying foods from day to day. Many people eat the same or similar things from one day to the next. For example, if we want to copy our apple and chocolate milk to tomorrow's breakfast since we know we'll be eating the same thing, we will simply click the three dots at the bottom right for breakfast and select copy meal and then select tomorrow. Now our breakfast for tomorrow is already tracked. This feature can save you a lot of time. Before we finish up, it's important to show you where you can see an overview of your macros for the day. If you click the four bars in the top left once again, and select nutrition from the menu, and then select nutrients as your header, you can see how many calories you've eaten, your goal, and how many are remaining. In order for tracking macros to work, you have to be compliant with your macros. This means each day you have to eat within 10 grams of your target protein, within 10 grams of your target carbohydrates, and within five grams of your target fats. If you go over or under on any single macro within that range, you will be considered non-compliant with your macros for that day. Compliance is extremely important because if you're not compliant, it's difficult to know if your macros are correct. If you have any questions, please post in the comments below or email me at tony at architectfitness.com. And we'll see you all next time for another video on how to maximize your nutrition.